Staging with Mr. Miracle by Tom King and Miss Jared. Today I want to talk about one of my favorite ongoing comic book run, which is Mr. Miracle by Tom King and Miss Jared. Specifically, we'll be looking at issue 4 of this amazing series. So before we start, spoiler warning, I'm going to spoil one of the best scenes in this book and in my opinion, one of, if not the best scene in comic book of 2017. So please, please, please go read this comic before watching this video. This will spoil the best scene ever and you won't be able to take that back. So context first. Orion, the son of Darkseid, questioned Mr. Miracle's allegiance to him. So in order to determine whether Scott Free is being corrupted by Darkseid's anti-life equation, Orion, who currently takes the position of High Father of New Genesis, arranged a trial for Mr. Miracle. He appoint himself as the accuser, defender, and the judge. So plaintiff, defendant, and judge. Doesn't seem like a very fair try. But anyway, the rule of judgment is simple. All Mr. Miracle has to do is identify a series of statements with either true or false to the best of his ability. Orion point out that I'm interested here in your belief, I'm not interested in your doubt. So we have a really simple setup for a scene, a simple statement by Orion, true or false response by Mr. Miracle. Now there's a lot I can discuss about this scene and this book in general, from its awesome writing by Tom King to its surrealist art by Mitch Sher to the incredible use of 9 panel grid to create a rhythmic back and forth between Mr. Miracle and Orion or even how Tom King paid tribute to Jack Kirby Mr. Miracle run by using his narration at the start and end of every issue. But what I want to focus on today is how this scene is set up physically and how this helped Mitch Jarrett subtly use the layout of the room to emphasize the escalation of this awesome scene. Now it's important to point out that this scene takes place in one room with the physical location of the character completely mapped out. In fact, Miss Cheryl and Tom King painstakingly go to great length to do so. Before the try scene even starts, we spent 5 pages on this issue on this room, which for a comic with only 22 pages excluding the cover and the ad, seemed kinda insane. That's more than 20% of the comic book spent on the setup for this scene alone. But trust me, it's worth it. So essentially, you get 5 pages of Mr. Miracle storyline which consists of 3 really cool scenes. First is of Light Ray informing Scott of his trial. Big Bada isn't too happy about that. Second scene is of Bada and Scott together at night, the, the calm before the storm. Third scene is one of dreamlike sequence of Mr. Miracle performance. Then you get this 5 page setup for this trial and 12 awesome pages of the trial itself. That make 22 pages total of this issue. So let's, let's dive in and look at the setup. There's some awesome sequential visual and sound effect storytelling in this setup. Like how you can hear mother box sound effect before Orion enter the room and two mother box sound effect before Right Ray and uh, uh, this green guy show up. From writing perspective, King used this 5 page setup to allow the necessary exposition of how the trial would play out by Orion. He made sure to add some levity to the scene by using callback to sit or stand story beat from the last few issue, making three characters sit on the small living room couch and of course the carrot tray. But this is where Mitch Jarrett come in and elevate this exposition heavy setup scene by mapping out where each character are seated in the room. You can see the three characters fitting in a couch could have been just, just a visual gag, right? But Mitch Jarrett established something important in this scene. He clearly mapped out that the three characters are on the middle of the room, sitting in a very specific order. Mr. Miracle is sitting on the left, Orion is sitting on the right. In the middle, we have right lay, big butter, and the green dude from left to right in that order. Okay, so how is that important? Well, it's important to the try because the try itself is so simple. But due to how Mitch usually frame his panel, uh, he usually only focus on the subject, it's really difficult to escalate the tension of the scene itself. It's the David Fincher style of directing, you focus only on the subject no fancy camera movement but in David Fincher films he get around that by filming a lot of take and capturing the actor best performance but in the comic book acting is not really a thing here sure you can draw characters with lifelike facial reaction but you can only go so far with that so how did Mitch Jarrett solve this conundrum well simple escalation through movement if you pay attention to where Orion is positioned in the first panel, you will notice that he's all the way in the back of the room, a really small subject in the first panel. In fact, he even turned his back on the camera, but in the second panel, he turned around. By the third panel, he slowly moved 
closer and closer to the camera. The first place, this was done pretty obviously by having both Mr. Miracle and Orion facing the camera. So all Miss Sherry has to do is increase Orion's size to create this movement as he moved toward the camera. But then second page is where it cut to profile shot. Mr. Miracle is on the left looking at Orion on the right. Orion is on the right looking at Mr. Miracle on the left. This camera angle is ingenious in that it perfectly pits Mr. Miracle and Orion against one another, but it also introduced a new problem. How on earth are you supposed to create movement with a profile shot? In film, this is not a non-issue, right? Because we can always see the subject moving even in a profile shot. But in comic book, movement it is difficult in the first place. But in a profile shot, that is even more challenging, right? Well, this is where the geographical setup of the room pay off. Mitch Cheryl established movement by using the background. We already know from the start that Scott is on the left, Orion is on the right. But another thing we also know is that the three characters sitting in the couch are in the center of the room. So that's what Mitch Jared used. It's so subtle that you might not even notice it on the first read because it's in the background. But you can clearly see how Orion moved from the right side of the room to the left, slowly passing through the green dude, big badra, and light ray in that order. In fact, Orion keep moving and moving closer and closer, and he also keep winning his argument. So much so that the camera stopped cutting back to Scott. The camera stayed with Orion for three panels in a row, where he completely get right in front of Scott's face. And after that, they both occupy the same panel. Orion has moved all the way from the right side of the room to the left side, right in front of Scott's face. So rather than cutting between left and right, they both occupy the same space. Orion's statement and Scott respond are right there in the same panel, completely doubling the speed of how reader read every panel. But then something weird happened. Mr. Miracle keep responding to the statement with true again and again and he avoid eye contact and look down. You can also see that this panel is where Orion back out just a little bit. Then something weirder happened, the camera moved from a profile shot of the two characters to a close-up facing Mr. Miracle over Orion's left shoulder. And we can see Scott anguish. He looked down, avoiding eye contact. He then looked up again and looked back down again, almost completely closing his eye. And then this happened. After 10 pages of back and forth between Orion and Mr. Miracle, Scott Free finally break. Orion find Mr. Miracle guilty and that's how the issue end. The way Mitch Sherrod and Tom King used the geographical layout of the room combined with Orion movement to escalate the scene is just incredible. The decision to illustrate majority of those panels in a profile shot is also a really ballsy move. It is so rewarding to see how the setup paying off with how they tackle the scene. And when I finally realized that Orion moved all the way to be in the same panel as Scott Free, my mind was blown. I'm gonna come back to this book again and look at it from writing perspective because Tom King is also doing ton of cool writing stuff that you might not have noticed in this book. If you haven't read Mr. Miracle yet, go and read it. This is only but one of the many awesome scenes that exist in this book. But I guess th that's it for today. Thank you for watching and see you guys next time.